Good morning. My name is Dr. Ken Anderson. We're here at the Anderson Center for Hair with today's patient, James. This is a part of an ongoing series of techniques in artist robotic hair transplant surgery. And today I'm specifically going to talk about the length of the hair that is optimal for the robotic procedure. To do that, I'm going to have the robot measure the hair length for us. Put on some gloves. And we use vinyl gloves in case uh, anyone has a latex allergy. I think prevention is the best form of preventing any sort of problems there. So we're going to take our tensioner as shown yesterday. We're going to seat the tensioner, gather the patient reminder straps, take my cloth, and we're going to place a grid. The proper tensioning is critical. Okay, put the tool down, place a little upward traction on the tensioner because that's kind of the direction the robot will push. Come on in a bit. And then we fasten it down, not too close. We fasten it in, and then I'm going to make a, a good judgment to make sure it's nice and flat. The robot really likes it when it's flat, so it's important to do that. Now I'll take a little bit of, of just normal saline, and sometimes in the corners, because of the head is a round surface and the robot likes it flat, especially in the upper corners, we're going to just inject a tiny amount of, of saline there. And then we'll, as I like to do, we take a little piece of glove to keep it sterile, and we're going to use our durometer and check the, the pressure. It's 43 pounds per square inch of tension, which is excellent. And then I'm just going to show you a bit about, just like yesterday, you can see the color. I'm sorry about the focus. I'm not really sure why sometimes the focus isn't correct. You can see that the, the skin outside the tensioner blanches in color. It's nice and pink. And when I press on it and then leave it this little white spot. Well, you can see that the skin inside the tensioner is, of course, a lighter color than the skin outside because of all the tension. And just like yesterday, James is in a very comfortable position. It's a massage-like chair. We have the six-jointed robotic arm ready to go. We've got our microscopic stations ready to sort, count, and trim the grafts in preparation for transplantation. We've got our monitor ready for the team to see make sure they know what's going on because we work in concert here as a surgical team we've got our uh, our entire cart ready to go all the tools we'll need for today and yet another microscopic station I really believe microscopic dissection uh, is the way to go you know the old school way is to just use loops but we really believe in microscopic uh, dissection so I'm going to hand the camera back and we're going to, going to hold it steady and I'm going to go ahead and this is, we're going to take the fob in here, we're going to take the fob in my hand and we're going to bring the six jointed robotic arm in, see it moves very smoothly, there's two stereoscopic cameras in there I'm going to show you in a moment, I'm just going to manually bring it in and we're going to converge these lasers, lasers and robots, got to love it. And then it's going to orient itself to the tensioner. Okay, so what I'm going to show you now is a little bit about the robot. Here it is in position. Of course, we've got the white light system. Very latest upgrades. We've got to let me show you this again. This is a very interesting view. You can see up under there like two eyes looking at you. Those are the stereo stop, stereoscopic cameras and in concert they are able to see the angle of the hairs and extract them in a robotic precision way or with robotic precision. Right at the end here we can see a 19 gauge 0 0.9 millimeter punch but what I really wanted to show you and I'll show you here on the 
surgeon's operating station is the length of the hair. 1.2 millimeters. His density in this area is 70 follicular units per centimeter squared, which is a very good density. And again, this is the, the robotic station. Everything that's in color is like a heads-up display on a pilot's helmet. We can move this around. These are the no-fly zones. The tensioner does have some height to it, and so we wouldn't want to have the punch hit the, uh, the actual tensioner, as you can see right here. And if we choose that hair, we can see its angle. It's 36 degrees off of the scalp. This is a virtual head and right now that's where the tensioner is on the head and we can move this around we can move the head around and move the tensioner with it you can see this is how we keep track of where the tensioner is on the head it's a virtual virtual reality really and we'll move it back to where it is in reality which today we're starting in the midline if we go back over here just want to show how the hair in the area of dissection actually let me what we're going to do is just kind of for the purposes of this video we're going to retract the robot and so the robot arm is going to move and retract back into its position right there and if we look back down at James's head we'll turn on our operating light for a more closer examination now we patients ask you know do my, does my hair have to be trimmed for the FUE procedure and the answer is yes the robot works best with hair that is 1.0 to 1.2 millimeters in length and you can see the hair above it is not quite that short because it doesn't need to be today but the hair inside the treated area outlined by the purple markers is exactly 1.2 millimeters and I do the trimming myself to make sure that it's perfect I'm a bit of a perfectionist which I think is a good thing in plastic surgery and hair transplant surgery and I think you'll agree any surgery really that's a great view of the tensioner and you can see again the difference in the color of the skin inside you know that's nice and firm whereas this is a little more spongy you can even see the sponginess in the skin when I press on it and here you don't see that I'm pressing even harder and it doesn't move James does, does this hurt at all are you, are you having any pain you could say no nope, nope. Very good. And James is awake but sedated, and he's got a, you know, in case his nose gets itchy, we've got a little long Q-tip. Show us the Q-tip there, bud. There you go. It's a longer Q-tip, so he can reach up under there and scratch his nose should he need to. There we go. So, anyway, thanks for joining us. This has just been another video showing a little, you know, some of the finer techniques on how we perform the, the robotic procedures here at the Anderson Center for Hair. My name is Dr. Ken Anderson. Thanks very much for watching.